Here we are, another year. I'm so excited. 2021 has finally started. As, as in tradition, as in thought leadership and bringing you some people that are unique to what we do, I have found a very special individual, Wayne Miller, who is the executive director for the Venture Center. Wayne, how are you doing today? Jeff, I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, certainly grateful for 2020, but much more hopeful for 2021, as we're, as we're saying these days. But uh, appreciate uh, me being at the top of your list for this year and a uh, chance to speak with you. This is awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. So in, uh, let me see, in June of 19, I had the opportunity to meet this high, strung, very passionate individual by the name of Tracy Fox, who, as we all know it, runs in his chief revenue officer for BotDot. And so Chief uh, Tracy and I have gotten to know each other over the years, and he's mentioned you more than once, along with another company at, by, of MK Decisions. And so I'm like, who is this Wayne Miller? What does this guy do? So here we are, and we're going to learn all about you today. So Wayne, where did the concept for the Venture Center originate from? Where did that come from? Well, first of all, I'd, I'd just make a quick uh, comment about Tracy and, and Harai. You, you ought to be cautious about the people you hang around with, Jeff. That's the first thing. <laughs> Se secondly, thank you for, for, and I appreciate their kind words. Uh, you know, um, before we get into talking about the Venture Center, th th those are, you know, one of the things that really inspires me in the work that we get a chance to do is the people we get a chance to work with. Mm -hmm. And honestly, those are two of the finest that we have had come through our program. Tracy is an extraordinary guy, Harai as well, and these guys yeah. are just passionate and committed and, and, and resilient and gritty and just get out there every day and grind it out in the fintech world. And as we all know, it's not an easy path. But um, anyway, let me, let me get on to answering your question. The Venture Center is about an eight-year-old organization. Uh, my involvement has been for the last four years. Actually, it'll be four years this coming May. Um, it was founded by really three people, Jay Cheshire, uh, James Hendren, and a guy by the name of Lee Watson, who were Jay, Jay is the, the head of the chamber in Little Rock. Mm -hmm. uh, James is a serial entrepreneur and, and one of the founders of a big fintech company that existed in Arkansas called Arkansas System. And Lee is sort of a serial entrepreneur. And really the intent of the Venture Center was to create a place for entrepreneurs to go to have the resources that they need in order to uh, really grow their businesses and to be able to project them towards success. That was the intent. It started as a desk in the Little Rock uh, Regional Chamber with Jay as the lead there, and then ultimately started to move into its own space. Uh, four years ago, almost to the day, we moved into the Little Rock Tech Park, and we've been there, like I said, for the last uh, four years. Fantastic. So as the executive director of the Venture Center, what does your typical day look like, um, both during and after your 12-week accelerator classes? You know, um, one of the great things about being an entrepreneur is none of us like a typical day, right? So I, I don't know that I have one of those, but it, you know, obviously there there is uh, there is some 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 balance that we try to accomplish. You know, people know about us because of the accelerators that we mm -hmm. provide for both FIS and the ICBA, respectively. That's given us some global and certainly national recognition. But 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 really, the other thing is what's at the root of who we are is 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 our mantra, which is about educate, collaborate, and accelerate. And what we really want to be is a place for people who have ideas to give them a place to start where they can find the resources that are required. So when you start thinking about the fact that we're always looking at companies, we're always looking at, um, at, at participants for our, our community programming, whether it's our pre-accelerator, whether it's our pitch contest, whether it's Lift the Rock, those sort of things, days are seldom typical because we're always seeing new pe people and ideas kind of walk through the door now virtually as opposed to physically. Uh, but, you know, it does, when, when we have the, the cohorts in place, whether it's a community cohort or it's one of the accelerator cohorts, uh, you know, we've, we've got, you know, 20 plus people in the space and, and things are vibrant and banks are visiting and that sort of a thing. So when those conclude, it does get a little quieter and, and it's nice to get the break in between the programs. I must mm -hmm. and give us all a chance to, it's hard work. It's 20 hours a day. It's, you know, 16 weeks of that with each accelerator. So, uh, it's a hard working team, but you know, like I said, I, I actually love the fact that there's kind of no typical day. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. I, I appreciate that in my in my career and in and what I do as well. And you know, I look forward to these opportunities to to interview individuals like yourself, thought leaders that are really pushing the fold right between fintech 
and financial services and financial institutions. So jump into that mantra a little bit. Elaborate or educate, elaborate, accelerate. Jump into that. If I was a startup, where would I get out of those three pillars, those three, that mantra? That's a great question, and we hope that that's exactly who it, 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 uh, it speaks to, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think, um, you know, Jeff, you probably remember the day uh, not too long ago when we would write a 50-page business plan. Right? We don't do that anymore. We use things like a lean canvas. We use those sort of methodologies today to be able to really fail fast, learn quickly, and kind of recycle that approach. So the educational piece for us is to make sure that we have the educational resources for someone at from, from the point of inception of an idea all the way through scale, that we have the mentorship to support that and that, that educational aspect, that we have the tools in place like Lean Canvas methodologies, teaching people how to pitch effectively, how to build effective presentations, how to build pro formas, all the things that are critical components to building a good business, how to market, how to sell, those sorts of things. So the educational piece is just that. How do we educate our community and those participants who want to come through, give them the tools that they need? From a collaborative perspective, it's about working with the resources that we also have in our community and, and now around the globe for us. It's about working with our local businesses. It's about working with our universities. It's about working with other entrepreneurial service organizations within our state because collaboratively, and, and I preach it a lot. It's probably one of the words I use the most because I think it's so important to be transparent, to be willing to share the recipes because what we're trying to do is promote entrepreneurship. We're trying to help people be successful. And it's not an easy road, as we all know, to do that. It's tough. It's hard. It's challenging. So we want to make sure we have those collaborative resources that are required that go beyond the skill sets that we have in the Venture Center, that we expose them to uh, to the universities, to, to the intelligent people, and to the corporations within our communities that contribute to help make them successful. The last piece is Accelerate. And for us, that's about helping primarily early-stage fintech companies accelerate in their path towards success and, and to, to, to grow and to market more effectively and, and, and to grow revenue and raise capital and do those sorts of things. And with that, we enjoy two uh, corporate relationships. One is, of course, with FIS, who is the largest fintech in the world, and of course, with the ICBA, the Independent Community Bankers of America, who represent 99.5% of the banks in our country and have been uh, been pretty critical in, their, in, in this last year with PPP, et cetera. So, they have really truly really been the ventilators for small businesses, I like to say. Yep, yep. So, so you mentioned your two sponsors, and and you know, in preparing for our conversation, you know, I'd seen that several people have asked you about you know fintech and what that could represent, the disruption that that could represent for banking and banks, right? So, so how do you navigate, um, and how do you teach your startups how to navigate fintech bank? Great question. Um, you know, I, I think the, so, so part of what we try to make sure that we do very effectively is to understand the problems that we're trying to help our clients solve, right? Community banks have a very unique set of problems and concerns. They're, they're, they're typically in a buy versus build situation when it comes to technologies. How do they begin to determine what to select and what do they select from? So we play a very specific role. And, and listen, I, I give the ICBA big props for wanting to be the organization that decided we're going to help community banks innovate. Secondly, I love them because they chose us in that process. Mm -hmm. And it's been, it's now in our third year. And as you know, we're actually launching uh, the third year of our accelerator, the ThinkTech Accelerator with the ICBA tomorrow. And I certainly hope people will go to the Venture Center website today and register to participate and see these 10 great companies. But one of the things that we do both with FIS and the ICBA is try to make sure that we understand as part of our mission, what we're trying to solve. Certainly, we don't want to look at solutions based on the current clients that we have where the solutions are disintermediating to banks, right? Disruptive is fine. We don't mind that it's going to disrupt technology or change the way things are done. But if it's going to take the bank out of the equation, you know, clearly, Jeff, that's inconsistent with the ICBA and FIS's mission. So, yeah. you know, that's sort of our first box is we look at companies to say, is this disintermediating? It doesn't mean we don't like the tech. It doesn't mean we don't like the founders but it doesn't, may not necessarily fit into our program, which is a bank enabling type of a situation mm -hmm. that we're in. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of answers your question in terms of how we kind of try to na navigate that. But, you know, we try to stay in our lane where that's concerned. Um, we love the, the wild cards, as we like to say, we love finding technology that we hadn't necessarily been looking for. We, we work very closely with 25 uh, 
uh, community bankers that are part of our selection committee, for example, at the ICBA, who help us make this selection out of hundreds of applications through a three-step interviewing process, a 90-point due diligence process, et cetera. With FIS, gosh, last year we determined that nearly 100 people inside of FIS touched this program in some way. So it is, um, we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not foolish enough to think we're smart enough to make all the decisions. We like the decisions that we make at the Venture Center. We think we make some good ones, but we're grateful for the collaboration, right, that we get with our clients to help select the companies that are most relevant to, uh, to, to be able to do business with the ICBA members and with, the, with FIS as a company. Yep, yep. You know, I think, I think what's, what, what is the greatest thing that we all face all the time is change, right? It, it's always moving, and, and I really appreciate the fact that, that you're giving entrepreneurs and these companies the ability to come to market quickly through the accelerator, but also be nimble enough to, to change the way things are being done today. And then to have an organization like ICBA support that change to make their community makes better, I think is very critical. It, it is. You know, um, we just had a brief rehearsal for tomorrow's event with the, the fintech companies that are participating. And, and uh, you know, obviously doing this virtually is a, a much different uh, thing. And, and, and it's, it's, been, it's been advantageous in many ways. It's also been challenging. I, I just miss not being with these guys and these women who were just terrific and courageous people. Uh, but, but, you know, it's, it's interesting as, as we talk about the value of our program versus others is as of today, we're not, we haven't even, we physically started the program on Monday, right? We, we do the small incubation phase for a couple of weeks, but banks start to visit tomorrow. And right now we have nearly 200 banks participating in, in getting a chance to meet with these companies over the course of this next 12 weeks. Wow. So you, you think about the value of that and, and, you know, we, we've never really focused on helping people raise capital at the Venture Center. We do that. We help people with that, et cetera. But what we've done a very good job is helping them raise customers, right? Mm -hmm. And that is, that is the part of the purpose of what we do here. And I think that's why you're going to see the Horizon. and I think you're going to see the Tracys talk about the amount of value. Because as an early stage company, if I said to you, listen, I need you to go out and meet with about 50 or 60 or 100 banks over the next 12 weeks, not only that, I want you to meet with the C-level execs from those banks so that you can really have this exchange. It's a fool's errand. I don't think you could do it. I don't think it's yeah. impossible. It sure be tough. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's really part of the great value that we provide. Also, the, both programs give you access to, to these tremendous distribution channels. FIS is 23,000 banks globally. The ICBA is nearly 5,000. So if you make the right inroads, the other thing is, is we've created an environment there for the bankers and the fintechs that's very safe, right? It is not necessarily a sales environment. They're not really there to sell their products. It happens. It's kind of a lie, I guess, to some degree, because everybody's, you know, if you're married, you're selling, right? But the point is, 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 that, is that it's a chance for these fintechs and these bankers to come together in a relevant, well-vetted set circumstance that's highly trustworthy and transparent, where they exchange ideas, exchange mm -hmm. concepts and ideas, and really work together to shape the future of fintech not individually. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, you know, I, I think that, that you, you, you phrase it very well in that it's a trusted, safe place to do that, right? In the, in the banking opportunities that I've found, God bless them, they're not very creative. They like it a certain way. And so for them to be in, inside the boundaries and, and understand the, the rules of engagement, I think it really can expand that opportunity for change. Um, and, and confident change, which is, is critical for success. So four years, what have you enjoyed most in that time? And I know that that's like a blink of the eye, but, but what have you most enjoyed during that time? You know, I've started a lot of companies. I've had some great success. I've had some significant failures. You know, the dot-com in 99, everybody knows how that one ended, et cetera, and, and you know, the director. So, uh, you know, I think for me, it's, it's a really a very easy answer. I am just completely inspired by working with these, these, these with working out with entrepreneurs and founders of companies. Mm -hmm. I, I just think, um, I, you know, I was very fortunate coming up and I still am. I have mentors who are very important to me, who have helped me shape my career, my life, how I think, how I act, how I, how I do business. Mm -hmm. um, the value of that is, 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 is priceless. And, and I'm hopeful 
that it, it, my work every day, which I love the work that I do and the people that I work with, and that's really great fortune, that I can have that same impact. And to me, if I can save somebody a minute, a day, a week, or a month in their journey towards success, that is the greatest reward that I can get. And that I think that's really what I love the most, is being able to share what I've learned and kind of pay it forward uh, to others and, and help them and help them be successful. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Humility and gratitude, good things to live by. Man, you know, it's... Uh, you know, it's it's so funny. We we we're very transparent at the Venture Center about what we do. I'm happy to share what we do with anybody. I don't care, right? It's it's not it's it's all about execution. And and one of my board members, he says it better than I do. He says, you know, I've got a lot of Wolfgang Puck's recipe books at home, Wayne. And and, and he's right. You know, it doesn't mean we can cook like Wolfgang, right? So the point is, is you got to be able to execute. But um, you know, it's it's just a privilege to get up every day and to run to work, to be with my team and to work with these companies and to work with our clients. I mean, it's not, I'm, this isn't bullshit. <laughs> I really mean this. And, and, and I just feel it's a great privilege. And, and I, I, I hope everybody has that opportunity. And, and, you know, I'm in a little different stage in my life than I was 20 or 40 years ago. My risk, you know, is my risk uh, profile is a little different than it was then, but I don't know. We may start another company who you never know, right? Being <laughs> entrepreneurs, that's part of the fun, right? So. That's part of the fun. It's like riding your motorcycle, man. You got to do it every every chance you get. <laughs> you got. You know, I love that too. So that's a good, good thing. So that's fantastic. It. So you know, I, I ask this question to all of our thought leaders: What advice would you give to any startup or any individual wanting to make a difference in the fintech or or banking industry? Man, you know, the the first piece of advice is you know God gave you two ears and one mouth, right? So take time to listen. Listen to your customers, right? Um, we, we tend to fall in love with our technology instead of the problem. Fall in love with the problem, right? Make sure you understand it. Make sure you're, you're clear. Take advantage of every bit of feedback you can get, whether you like it or not, whether you think it's right or wrong. Listen to it. You know, try to digest it. Do the discovery that's required. Um, and, 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 you know, sometimes the strategy, we, there's so many choices that we're asked to make in the course of a day, particularly if we're in a leadership role, right? If you're starting a company today, you're always doing three, you're doing one of three things, I always suggest. You're either raising capital, raising customers, or raising people to come and work for you, right? Mm -hmm. Build great teams. You, you know, Steve Jobs was so right. You know, hire smart people to tell you what to do, not to tell them what to do. He's right, absolutely right about that. I, I am able to lead from behind because I have such great people working for me. I can set vision, I can set direction. These guys can execute. I don't have to micromanage. Obviously, there's times where I stick my nose in, sometimes probably where they don't want me to, but that's part of being a good leader too, right? So, so work on being a good leader. Be respectful. Be thoughtful. Listen to what your customers say. Understand your customers. You have nothing without the people who pay for your product or service, right? And take care of your people first, right? Your customers second. There's some people have that confused. I don't. Because if yeah. your people are happy and they're well taken care of, they will take great care of your customers always. Right? Exactly. So I, I don't know. There's a few gems there for you. <laughs> Thank you very much for those gems. You're I right. loved it. I loved listen. I love take care of your employees. They'll take care of your customers. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, if you can't sell something, if you don't have any customers, you know, good you luck. You don't have a business, sorry. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> so, so here's 2021, you know, and we're on the prefaces of this vaccine. Mm -hmm. What do you most look forward to in 2021 and beyond? Well, listen, I, I'd be lying if the first thing I didn't say was getting back together, you know. Um, I, I really, I really miss my folks and, and I miss being with these entrepreneurs and, and I miss seeing the people who come visit us. I miss our mentors and, and that, that part's been tough. Qualitatively, it's been more difficult than it has quantitatively. Right. So, but, you know, again, as I said in the beginning, I'm really grateful for 2020, not, not for the pandemic, obviously not for the, the challenge that we've had as a country that, but I'm, I'm grateful for the learning, you know, there's, and you know this, Jeff, you're, you're a leader. When you're leading an organization in, in, in a family, whatever it may be, is that this thing this past year has taught us so much about who we are and, and what we do and how we react. And, and it's impacted every single decision that we make, right? Um, but I'm grateful for the learning that we've had. I'm grateful for the additional exposure that we've had, for the way it's enabled us to grow, the way my team pivoted instantly on March 15th to a virtual structure. I mean, we yep. literally did it on that day and never looked back. 
Um, I'm grateful for some of the lucky decisions that I made, like just having a 30 minute call every morning and every morning since since that happened with our team to say, hey, just because I really wanted to sort of do kind of the checkup from the neck up and make sure everybody was OK. But it's become a part of our culture now. Right. So these sort of things have been interesting. As for 2021, I am um, I just think great things are ahead. I think uh, we're in an interesting industry because obviously the pandemic has forced adoption change. What we're seeing oh, yeah. with payments, you guys know this, how people yeah. are borrowing. We're getting technology to people who haven't had it historically because because they have to. We're doing a better job with the unbanked and the underbanked. So there's so many great things that are coming from this. And um, and, and I think I think we're going to sustain this. And I think this time next year, I don't know what's normal. I mean, I'm not sure what normal is. I don't know if anybody knows what it is, but I, I know one thing. We will have a hybrid solution here that will be a combination of on-prem plus people plugged in through these types of methods, et cetera. So that's pretty exciting. So we can expand our audience. And I think when you expand the audience, you expand opportunity. So I think uh, I think 2021 is going to be filled with opportunity and great opportunities for all of us. I'm excited. Yep, me too. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to get too. the arm too, right? So. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, 2020 was a was a wonderful year of learning, right? Um, and it was also a very good year for us in that we had more business that we could shake a stick at. Uh, don't like the the causes that it's done to to the unfortunate, but. It's been a great year for business, and it's also been a year of connections, right? Um, yes. Not the handshake, which I miss, not the pat on the back, not not the booth guy, but but different types of meaningful connections. So it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, Wayne. It's been an honor. I'm grateful for the time. Um, congratulations and, and much success to your launch tomorrow. If you guys get a chance, please check it out. I'm registered. There's going to be a whole bunch of companies uh, participating in this event that, that, that the Venture Center launches tomorrow. And Wayne, we look forward to having you on the show again. Thank you so much for your time today. Jeff, thank you so much. I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share what we do, and I'm, I'm hopeful that what we do is meaningful. I hope people will take a moment and join us tomorrow. It's venturecenter.co.co.com. Uh, please come on on and register and learn more about what we do. And if we can be helpful to you or anyone in any way, shape, or form, that's our mission. That's what it's about. So if we can be useful and give somebody some guidance or some point them in the right direction or be helpful, we'd love to do that. And, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk to you today and to get to know you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wayne.